Boxing King Media in association with Box Raw, with my man Malik Scott. Malik, it's great to see you back here in the UK. Firstly, uh, how are we? Very good. Very excited. Um, exciting times. It was a little bit draining early this morning. I mean, early this week, you know, because the uh, the white situation that happened. But I'm glad Hellenius came in. I'm glad. You know, everything, the schedule programming is still going on. Different opponent, not as much as a dangerous opponent in a way, but, you know, the show goes on and we're going to have fun. I saw your Instagram. You only came in, uh, I believe, about 24, 36 hours ago into the country. Was that delay mainly down to not knowing whether you were Joshua's opponent or whether Chisora might step in for Joshua and you might have to take a sidestep? We knew we was coming here to fight Chisora or Joshua because um, Joe received the offer very early on. And uh, we went another direction. Well, we ain't going another direction. We just told them to come and let's do better business than that. And then um, we came over here. But either way, we was coming to fight, whether it was Chisora or whether it was uh, AJ. How close were you for, uh, for that AJ fight? I think we was extremely close, extremely close. I think um, um, if it wasn't hilarious, I w I'm kind of like, I don't know what surprises me, but it, I'm kind of like surprised that Gerald didn't get the shot. But when you think about the history, of last minute replacements dealing with Joshua, they have to play what they would perceive as dang as not dangerous. So they're looking at Helene as they can't imagine him being dangerous to Joshua. But and we'll see. We'll see. But I know what won't happen. What won't happen is Hellenius won't get decapitated like he did when we fought him last October. And we decapitated him from the back foot. That was Deontay backing up walking them into a bomb. So we're going to see how AJ hand on Saturday. I'm a, I'm a natural scouting reporter, so I can't say, like, I'm here scout reporting AJ performance. I'm going to do that naturally. So we're going to see how he handle it. And in the meantime, Gerald is going to be Derek Chisora. And after Gerald be Derek Chisora, I want Andy Ruiz for Gerald Washington next. What have you made of uh, Dylan White failing the, the – his, his VADA test, his adverse finding, it's not the first time it's happened to him, but as always, he's, he's innocent until Absolutely. proven guilty. And, and, and just like you and myself, it's uncomfortable for us to probably talk about it the way that we would want because we, I would consider dealing like distant friends. Like we are, we see each other, we come up in this game together. So when things like that happen with people that you're semi close with or you have to, you know, it's tough. But saying that, on the other hand, we all have to be responsible. We all have to hold ourselves accountable. If anyone know how this business is when it comes to VADA testing and things of that nature, it's Dylan White. This is not the first time. It's not, it's not the second time. I believe it's the third time he got caught up into something. So it's like what we can't do is play victim. What we can't do is point the finger. And what we can't do, can't do is blame others for our mistakes. What we really need to do, the real story here is not having lame people around you not having people that is uh, um, interrupting your good decision making, and not having people around you that is, you know, not responsible, not making sure you're good. Um, Chris Eubanks Sr. said something concerning his son and Nigel Ben Jr., Connor Ben. And he said, it's really, the team should be fired. It shouldn't, this shouldn't just be a fighter thing. The whole team should just, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough for me to talk about because you know, I mean, I want, I want, I want Dylan to do good until he was able, was fighting us and Deontay. That's the only time that I wished him any type of type of anything negative. But I wanted to see him and AJ. And the real sad part is that now him and AJ will never even get in the ring again because of this. You know, and the revenue he was going to get for the fight and the opportunity and historically what it would have meant to the domestic fans here that was waiting to see the fight. Not even counting the international fans because there's more people that was interested in seeing this fight than there was people not interested in seeing this fight. Once in a while you get your guys say, I don't want to see it again. Yes, you do. Because the first fight was domestic. The first fight he had AJ out on his feet. AJ came back and clicked him. The mayhem, everything that went on. So it should have went on. Whatever Dylan decide to do, whatever it is he's dealing with, I wish him the best. But come on, bro, we got to be a little bit more accountable when it comes to our decision making. Malik, everyone's talking about this big night of boxing in Saudi Arabia with Anti Joshua and Deontay Wilder. It's yes. no secret. Yes. You're the head trainer for Deontay Wilder. Yes. His last fight, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, was Hellenius in October last year. Absolutely. Is it ideal for someone like Deontay to go into a massive fight like Anti Joshua, potentially now in January, without a fight in between and being inactive for so long? 
Um, I, I mean, as far as what the status quo may say, you, you, you um, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. But this, this goes for Deontay and this goes for all fighters of this modern day. Inactivity is the highest trending thing in boxing right now. So the same way you prepare for a fight is the way you have to prepare, you, you have to prepare double for the inactivity aspect because this is coming to all fighters. I hate the fact that it's happening to the guys at the highest level because they're the ones that need to fight the most because the competition is higher. So how do you train and placement for your inactivity? You have to be crafted all the time. You have to be working on your base all the time. You can't have a nightlife. You can't, because you, 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 fighters already have to train six or seven, eight weeks hard for a training camp, right? But if you're coming off inactivity, your whole life should be boxing almost. Your, your rest days should be crafted and working on your balance, crafted and working on your defense, crafting and working on making sure you're checking yourself on both sides with your hand, crafting on your positioning. These things you just have to do and you can't wait to do five weeks before a fight, in my humble opinion. Um, just saying that, does Deontay have a fight before AJ in Saudi? We're working on it, we're working on Andy it. Andy Ruiz update, I know he's asked for a lot of money. Andrew Ruiz don't want to fight Deontay. You know, he was made an offer. Him and his dad, they was talking like they wanted to fight. Me and his dad talked all over months. They said, he said, we we're going to get the fight done. Then when it came to getting the fight done, he was protecting his son and he didn't want to accept the money. So we're going to see what's next. But I have other plans for Andy Ruiz. After Gerald beats Chisora Saturday night, that's the fight I actually want for Gerald is Andy Ruiz. So, but Andy, Andy Ruiz, he blew his opportunity to fight Deontay. It wasn't a big opportunity for Deontay to fight him. It was an opportunity for him to fight Deontay. Him and his dad, they got bigger plans, though. A Andy is becoming an actor. They're doing movies. They're doing things of that nature. So, you know, we'll see. Obviously, you, you made your opinion clear. Does that also reflect Deontay's opinion as well? Does he want to fight in between? Or is yes. he happy to wait? Because we know there's yeah. a chunk of money waiting. Yeah, uh, if, yeah. Deontay, is try hopefully, like, you know what I mean, he's trying to get something in between time. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up fighting around October or something like that. You know what I mean? That, you know, you could say that's the time frame that if anything is going to happen as far as opponents in a fight, we're looking to do something to keep him sharp in October before the AJ fight. Mate, can I get a quick prediction on um, the chances you give Daniel Dubois against Alexander Usyk in, in about three weeks' time? I think Usyk is going to stop Dubai. Yeah, I think um, um, the inexperience of Dubai at this level against this kind of opponent is going to tell, and it may tell a little late or it may tell early, but I think um, he overcommits a lot, and when you overcommit against uh, an incredible counterpuncher like Alexander Usyk from a southpaw standpoint, then that's where he gets his momentum and he's able to hurt you with shots that you don't even see coming. And we're going to see. Um, Joshua in the second fight with Usyk was able to have a much better time with him, even in the first one because he didn't overreach. And every time he did overcommit, Usyk would make him pay with a good left hand and a hook and constantly control him with his lead hand feints and things like that. I don't think Dubois ever seen nothing like uh, Alexander Usyk, but I could tell you so many big men that Usyk has broke down. So many big men. Um, one is competing here Saturday night, named Anthony Joshua. He broke him down twice. Mike Tyson training Francis Ngannou for Tyson Fury. Yeah, that shit is can, so can, can Mike Tyson give him anything? To, to cause Fury oh, for, problems? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But the fight to me is a highlight fight, and I don't like highlight fights. I like distant boxing matches or knockouts that's earn, earned through proper techniques and things like that. I'm not, I look at the highlights from that. I look on your page and look at the highlight you put up from some, on your story. I won't watch that fight. I'm not interested. To me, you know, the WBC, I don't know. It's kind of, it, it holds up the division. It holds up the real shit. Um, come across like Tyson is babysitting the belt down a little bit. You don't fight Usyk, you don't fight Joshua, you don't fight, but you fight Francis. And it's for the revenue, I get it. I understand business, you know, but it just seemed like it holds up the division a little bit. I mean, with all this money coming in from Saudi, where we're talking tens of millions. You, for, you, you for can't turn that kind of money down. You just can't. They can't turn that kind of money down. And Saudi Arabia is paying fighters like they've never been paid before. You know what I mean? So you gotta, 
when I say the business aspect, I'm talking about the revenue gain for the fighters. That's all I mean by that. And when, with the revenue gain of the fighters, the fighters are going to look after themselves and they're going to look after their families. And by them doing that, sometimes it come across to people that want to see bigger fights made that like they're not making the best decisions. Yes, they are. They may not be making the best decision for you as a fan, but they're making the best decision for their families and themselves. Malik, OK, appreciate your time. Uh, wish you all the best on Saturday night with Joe Washington, Derek Chisora, and, yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up with you after the fight. Peace, brother. God bless you. Malik Scott for Boxing King Media, thank you very much.